Hello everyone. Welcome to this eighth lecture of Vibration with MATLAB. In last class, we have started two degree of freedom system and we solved the problem of free vibration for a two degree of freedom system. There we have seen both undamped and the damped system. Now in this class, we will see the force vibration response of a two degree of freedom system. So this is my system where I am having two masses connected with the two spring. Similarly, this is a system where I am having damping and here I am showing the governing equation of my system where this is my mass matrix, this is my damping matrix and this is my stiffness matrix. It is multiplied with the velocity, it is multiplied with the displacement and this is my acceleration vector. When I am saying that this is a force vibration problem, that means I can apply force on either of the mass or on both the mass. So I can apply a force here, let's F1, which will be F1 sine omega 1t. And here I can apply a force F2, which will be let's F2 sine omega 1t or omega 2t. I have a choice whether I can apply different excitation at different masses or I can apply the same frequency. Now what will happen if you are applying different frequencies? there will be a superposition of the two frequencies and the behavior will be based on the superposition result of the two frequencies here to understand the philosophy currently we are considering that both the masses will have the same frequency or what we can do we can simply apply a force on the first mass and we can consider that this is zero in similar fashion we can apply the force on a damped system and when you will apply the force your response can be considered as x1 and x2 and that you will find solving this governing equation so here i can write in case of force vibration on the right hand side we will have our force vector however in case of free vibration there were zero for at both the places so this is our governing equation and what we need to do here we are again solving the problem for considering the state space formulation so the first part which we need to solve is consider convert the given system into state space for and this is how we can convert it so this is my system where having i am having two masses and here i have applied the force f1 and f2 this is my equation in terms of mass matrix and stiffness matrix this would be a two cross two value this will also a two cross two value how what i will do here again i will define x1 x2 x1 dot and x2 dot corresponding to four state variable let's y1 y2 y3 and y4 so when i will rearrange the term and i will consider that x1 double dot is equal to y3 dot and x2 double dot is equal to y4 dot because i know that when i will differentiate this x1 double dot will become y3 dot so finally my equation will become what y1 dot y2 dot y3 dot and y4 dot i am not investing too much time here because we have already seen this in our previous class here we, we are interested mainly how to solve this force part so this would be my term for the four derivative of first order because we are applying the state space formulation so the second order equation will become first order equation here we will have our coefficient matrix which was a null matrix of 2 cross 3, identity matrix of 2 cross 2, then there were m inverse k and here also we had the 2 cross 2 null matrix. Then this was the y1, y2, y3 and y4. Now in case of force vibration, what you will have here, you will also have a mass. So I will write plus m inverse and this force matrix. Please understand how I am writing so because when you were creating this coefficient matrix you have divided this mass term to this stiffness term and how you are doing so when you will take this value on the right hand side and you will divide it by m finally you will get x double dot is equal to minus m inverse k x and plus m inverse f so this is how your equation will look like when you will rearrange this term because of this you will get this term which will be m inverse f and m is 2 cross 2 and this is 2 cross 1 but as we can see here that this is not feasible here we are having 4 cross 4 and here you are having 2 cross uh, uh, 2 matrix so what you need to do you have to simply convert it is as you have converted this uh, uh, coefficient matrix so what you need to do you have to just write 2 cross 2 null matrix here and then it will become what 
this will become your there will be four row and there will be two columns it will be four cross four and it will be two cross one so finally you will get four cross one matrix here so i hope that you have understood that i am writing it again so that it will clear that this would be your derivative term and let's write it as the y value derivative then your coefficient matrix let's see see then you are having y plus here what you will have you will have a null matrix of 2 cross 2 you will have your mass matrix inverse form of mass matrix and you will have your force term f1 and f2 so this problem we have to supply to our ode solver in the matlab and when we will solve the ode problem you will get the response of your system similarly when you are having a damped system there will not too much difference from this only the difference is that your coefficient matrix will have term corresponding to your damping here in addition to that again you are having a null matrix of 2 cross 2 and the mass inverse and then you will have your f1 and f2 so this is for the damped system and the previous one was from the undamped system so let's see our matlab code this is the matlab code for the undamped system line one two and three are standard line two clear memory clear the wind uh, the graphics the i'm giving input of k1 k2 and k3 here mass m1 and m2 this is my mass matrix this is my stiffness matrix and now i am supplying the force value please remember that this is a system where i am having two masses so i am having a choice to apply force either on the first mass or the second mass or both the masses so I am considering this omega underscore f1 is the frequency for the first force corresponding to m1 and this is the magnitude of force in the second case it is 0 0 that means what I am doing here I am applying a force here of magnitude 20 and frequency 6 so actually the force is what 20 sine 60 this is my force which is acting only on the first mass not on the second mass then line 14 is actually indicating the eigenvalue problem that means we are going to consider this eigenvalue problem in a separate lecture but here at least you should know that when we do the eigenvalue problem solution we get the natural frequency and the mode shape of your system again we are not interested in the mode shape here we only want to see the natural frequency so that using the natural frequency we can decide the time step when you will solve line 15 you will get the two natural frequency omega 1 square and omega 2 square this would be the output of this fr matrix and solve using this we can get the second natural frequency of your system which is higher higher than the previous one so we are going to consider this to decide our time step this part also we have solved in our previous lecture so here is my coefficient matrix cc and then here i am deciding my time step considering the maximum value out of these two value and this is my time step i am solving my system up to 500 time step line 25 indicating the initial value because this is a vibration problem where we have to give some initial value even though it is a force vibration problem i am giving here four initial value first two values are corresponding to displacement and these two values are corresponding to initial velocity I am considering all initial conditions as zero because I just want to see the effect of four. Then I am applying this ODE 23 which is standard MATLAB function but the MATLAB has a specific definition that how to apply this ODE. To apply this ODE function you have to create one function separate function there you are going to define your equations. In my case I have named it as test ODEF underscore 2D then i am supplying my time and initial condition to this ode solver the ode solver will give output of t solution and y solution so the t solution will give you the time information and y solution will give you the information about the two displacement and the two velocity so the y solution will have value let's i am solving the problem up to the 500 time step so it is going to have 500 rows and four columns and all individual column is corresponding to displacement displacement velocity velocity and it will be run up to the 500 value or whatever the length of your time but the y solution will have four columns individual column indicating individual 
value as i have defined my system as the displacement displacement and velocity velocity if you will go back and check what was the our system it was y1 y2 y3 and y4 where this is displacement and the displacement velocity and velocity so in similar fashion this would be the displacement displacement velocity and velocity for first mass second mass first mass and the second mass so when i will interpret my result i will visualize my result i have to understand that which column i have to see for corresponding displacement here in line 27 i am plotting the displacement of first and second mass so i have considered the time and the y solution if you are interested to see the velocity you can convert it into three or four or if you want to see only one displacement you can simply say one or two here what is this test ode 2d function so here i am writing it you can see here when i will call the function test ode f underscore 2d the system will prompt this file where the input will be t and y i want to use the coefficient matrix and two force values as well as the mass matrix in my function therefore i have considered this value as the global value you can see here in line 3 and 4 i am defining my two forces then this is a null matrix and again you can remember what was the force term i was in explaining that it will be a null matrix of 2 cross 2 then you should have m inverse and then you have f1 and f2 so here you can see that this is my null matrix this is corresponding to this value this is inverse m which is multiplying here with the force vector and finally here is what coefficient matrix multiplied with the y and the ff so this line is actually indicating that y1 dot y2 dot y3 dot and y4 dot which was a coefficient matrix then the y then this value and this value when i will solve the 26th line it will go to this function and finally i will get the response so this is how your undamped system will work in similar fashion this is your damped system the only difference here is that we are having damping matrix in addition to the mass and the stiffness matrix here also you can see i am having the force information then this is my coefficient matrix in addition to that as i said in the previous program that here i am using this eig command to decide my time step but this is not the all case always because in case of in case of undamped system what will happen when both the natural frequency as the forcing frequency will try to govern the system that means suppose your system is having natural frequency 8 hertz and 20 hertz in addition to that you are supplying a frequency of 6 hertz so what you will see in your system you will find that your system will have effect of 6 hertz 8 hertz and the 20 hertz however in case of damped system the natural part will decay in the transient part and you will finally have the steady state response that also we have seen in single degree of freedom force vibration lecture so i am not investing too much time here please understand in case of undamped system force condition both natural frequency as well as forcing frequency will come into your system so ideally what you need to do only taking the natural frequency is the not the right uh, approach what you need to do you have to see the natural frequency as well as the forcing frequency and finally you have to decide your time step based on the highest frequency or the lowest time period so this is your first code where i am defining the response of my this is my force vibration response for an undamped system so this is my this is the force vibration response of a two degree of freedom undamped system these three are the stiffness value then the mass value mass matrix stiffness matrix all other things we have seen so let's see the response when i will hit the run button so this is the output of your system and what is this you can see here that i am plotting the displacement of my system for first and second mass and this is the output so here you can see that it is not a pure harmonic curve instead of that it is having uh, multiple frequencies and as i said both the natural frequency as well as the forcing frequency will try to influence the system so in this case the two natural frequency as well as the forcing frequency exist in the response 
and you can see both the curves are starting from the zero value and this is these are the curve for the displacement and why it is so because my initial displacement are zero so the system is having only effect of force let's try something different let's give an initial displacement of value 0 0.2 and again run the code so when you will give the initial displacement is 0 0.2 we expect that one of the displacement will start from 0 0.2 and you can see here the blue line is now starting from 0 0.2 instead of 0 because i have given initial displacement to my system so in this way you can give different input you can give the force value as well as the displacement and the velocity value in the given code we are having provision to give ma a force at both the masses or at any of the masses so this is how your undamped system will give response for the given forces and this is the code just now we have seen and this is common for both damned and undamped system now this is the code for the damned system in addition to k and m we are having c matrix all other things are same so let's hit the run button and see the response of your system and you can see here because it is a damned system your response is decaying with respect to time and finally you are having a steady state response which is primarily a harmonic function here also you can see a minor variation and that is why because your system has not run for the sufficient time length. If you would have run it for the thousand time step, we expect that the transient part will completely go away and you will finally have a pure harmonic response. So you can see here that both the masses are moving in the same direction. As I said earlier that first in the first mode your system will have both the masses in phase. And in the given case, if I will go and I will see the natural frequency, the 6 hertz is close to the first natural frequency. Therefore, I am having both the masses in the same phase. For example, if I will change the fre excitation frequency, let's make it to 16 hertz. And let's see the response now. There may be possibility that both the mass will not be in the same phase now. They will have opposite phase and you can see here. Now the system is having different phases what you can see here that the natural part is, is still existing so what you need to do let's make it for the 5000 time step and see the response here we expect that now finally when we will see the response the system will have steady state part and you can see that it is not in the phase it is out of phase one mass is having positive value the other mass is having negative value so this is how your system work and you can see that what we have seen in the theoretical part the MATLAB code is representing exactly in the same fashion when the system will vibrate with the first mode we expect both the mass will be in the same uh, phase here i have not discussed the natural frequency of your system but i have considered one is the 6 hertz and another one is the 16 hertz if you are interested you can see we can simply check the natural frequency of your system when I will see the natural frequency, let's put the EIG and put the K and M value in the system and see the response. So these are the natural frequency of your system. But this is the square of the natural frequency. So what you need to do, you have to see square of your answer. And then divided by 2 pi. 2 into pi value. So finally you will get a frequency which will be in hertz. So one natural frequency is 9, another one is 13. So these are the two natural frequency of your system. So when we were having 6 hertz value, it, it is close to the first natural frequency. Therefore both the masses were showing the same, uh, moving in the same phase. However in the second case we had 16 hertz which was close to the second mode. So that we have seen both the masses were moving in the opposite phase so this is all about the force vibration response of a two degree of freedom system and we have seen the code as well as how we can play with the code to get the different output of your system but the most important thing you must understand that how to interpret the result of your system thank you